Hi there. Um, today I want to do a little thing I call um, drawing therapy. And every time I use the word therapy in kind of like the title of uh, a practice or a piece, I like to always say that I'm not a licensed therapist. And um, therapy can be a lot of things to a lot of different people. And there is a certain training that licensed therapists go through that make what they're doing um, founded or um, based on facts and science. And uh, accreditation is really important. And I would never want to diminish somebody's chosen path by calling what I do therapy. But, um, like I want to, I want to find another word for it essentially, because um, I feel like it's therapeutic. And sometimes people don't have the resources or the right rapport to find somebody to be their therapist, and so you can kind of be your own therapist. And still, you're not licensed, but it's better than nothing, you know. So um, here we go. Um, drawing therapy. You're gonna need a writing utensil. Um, I like using just a simple um, waterproof, fade proof, uniball micro pen. But some other things might work, like a marker or even a paintbrush and some paint. So, when you're ready to do this exercise, find a comfortable um, place where you can be for about a half an hour. Less even if you're um, in a rush, but you want to do this exercise anyways. But uh, I recommend a half an hour. It could be, um, I think, 10 minutes even is really beneficial. But sometimes you want to like soak up what you'd, you've done after you've done it. But anyways, um, I'm going to turn down the music a little bit. I put on some music so that... Um, when we're doing the exercise, we can um, find a, a place to kind of relax with our, th our thoughts. But anyways, once you have your writing your pencil, you'll also need a pen. And I prefer, no sorry, a paper. paper. I prefer unlined like this. And it helps the, the, the ideas flow on the page better. And so... It's currently 9.45 right now. And so I want to give us 10 minutes to do what, I, what I'm what i not sure to call yet. But the idea is, it's like lo logo development. So um, for the next 10 minutes, I want you to sit with your piece of paper, your single piece of paper, and your writing utensil, and um, feel your thoughts, your feelings. Think about what's bothering you. And um, don't, don't write it out. Try to, to draw it out. Um, you don't have to be a good drawer for this exercise, but the idea is to kind of communicate stuff to your future self. And so, um, stick figures, symbols. Um, I like thinking about what thoughts look like, but also like the the feeling of like inter inner inner dialogue is that a lot of it is just like feelings. It's hard to put into words, but sometimes it's easier to put into drawings. Um, so after this ten minutes, I'll talk about some drawings I made, and uh, so. Go ahead with your pen and paper, and the time starts now. And so I'm gonna time us for 10 minutes, and go ahead and start. And I'll, I'll kind of talk a little bit more about um, this practice. So the idea is that um, you may be stressed out or feeling like you're missing something, and Sometimes I feel like these feelings get overwhelming, and a lot of it is because I want to 
remember why I'm feeling this way or what I'm feeling, what I'm feeling about. And sometimes it feels like I'm, I'm shepherding a bunch of ideas in a, in, a, in a paddock in my mind, but like I keep losing sheep and then and, and, like other sheep come around and it's just kind of like, they seem like the same sheep, but I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, so the idea is that you're drawing stuff you're thinking about, stuff you're feeling, anxieties you might have, but also um, joys and stuff you're looking forward to. And um, sometimes I, I write down calendar dates that I'm really excited about, um, but I do it in like a little pictograph with a little square, like a calendar. And I think that helps kind of like keep the, the flow of the piece of paper. It's just like a place to empty out and to not judge and just like let these um, doodles come about and, and see what, like it, how, if it's satisfying to make them and that kind of thing. So um, I'm going to go ahead and, and do some drawing and I will uh, see you in about eight minutes and we can talk about it. For those of you who are joining us, um, we're doing a drawing therapy exercise. Grab a piece of paper and a pen and go ahead and empty your feelings, thoughts, hopes, anything you want. But the goal is to make it um, drawings, pictographic, could be stick figures. But the idea is to allow these things that you've been mulling about in your head to come out on a piece of paper. One of the reasons why I like doing these timed exercises is that sometimes you might think you're done, but then you'll be sitting around and thinking about it. And then um, it's kind of like a, a conveyor belt where there's, there's more stuff underneath the stuff, or past the stuff rather, than you know. So um, yeah, I like timed exercises because it allows you to relax. And when you relax, you can come up with more ideas and things. For those of us who are joining us, we're in the middle of a um, drawing therapy session. The idea is that you have a pen and a piece of paper and take some time to um, just draw your feelings. Um, I like making little figures and that helps me kind of keep track of all the things that I'm thinking about. But there's something really interesting about like the development of these drawings. I've been going to therapy for um, uh, about four months. It seems like a long time. I should check my calendar. But yeah, and so um, it's very interesting because the second session I had a sore throat and so the therapist um, suggested that we do some drawing instead of talking and I completely loved it. And this, this practice has been with me ever since and it's been interesting watching the drawings change. Um, I used to 
draw my mother a certain way and and I draw a different way now and it's interesting because it's like having these breakthroughs kind of is very encouraging to see the drawings change and having this outlet makes me feel like I can kind of like watch myself change and, and uh, document the process I'm really into documentation but anyways so we're gonna be doing another five minutes of drawing therapy so grab your pen and paper and I will see you soon and we're gonna talk about the drawings that I've made maybe you can think about the drawings you've made All right, so I imagine that you're finishing up some drawings and um, feel free to continue um, making those um, as it is. I'm not there, 
but also uh, the best part about these kinds of timed exercises is sometimes you want to continue even after the time is up. And I think that's a lovely impulse to continue with because um, of course we all want to be more creative and spend time doing stuff we like. Um, but for the sake of this exercise, being that as I'm not there, and um, uh, I would like to share with you um, the drawings that I made. Uh, this is pretty much like a cooking show where I made them yesterday, but um, I thought they were really good and important. Yesterday I had therapy um, with a licensed therapist, and so um, it was so nice to kind of like, you know, go over them with him, and I kind of want to go over them with you. Um, there's something very interesting about, like, showing these things as, as part of my process where it's like very personal drawings but um i think at this point i've just um, embraced social media and that kind of thing um like personal documentation as this way to help people see like the other side of humanity because you know if if we're only like seeing this mass market itself then is it you know, really what we want to put out anyway. I don't know, I'm still, I'm still I'm developing um, concepts of private self and public self. Um, but I think that, like, as, as, as journalists often do, um, there's this level of the world needs to know <laughs> the world. But I'm also just, you know, people that are interested in therapy and especially drawing therapy, I find it completely um revolutionary for people that don't like to talk so for those of us just joining us um we've already done a drawing exercise where we draw out our feelings and now i'm going to share some stuff that i have pre-baked um so anyway that's that's a weird metaphor you don't bake drawings i mean you can but i didn't but yeah <clears throat> so uh, this is what i did Maybe you can compare it to what you did at home. Check it out. I'm gonna go through each one and tell you about it and um, how it, I mean, just looking at this little map of my inner dialogue helps me feel like my problems aren't that numerous and they're pretty specific and there's something I can do about them. If I had a bulletin board, I would, I would put this on there and then I'd look at it and think about um, how I'm moving through my week and whether or not I'm addressing some of these things but since I'm not I'm not so um, soon I like the idea of some kind of bulletin board here as I am developing my desk situation desk I'm very excited about all these little accoutrements that make um, this workspace really practical for the imaginings that I like to put onto paper Anyways, I'm back to um, <laughs> the drawing board, essentially. So let's go ahead and get into it. This one, um, I've drawn this one before. Um, essentially, I don't exercise formally or enough. And so it feels like, like when I wake up in the morning, I'm like in a cage because I'm so stiff. And um, I, I, I just... I haven't figured out like what helps me exercise and what makes me feel like that's the most important thing to do right now. So, um, something to think about. Um, it's weird because it's like I, I, I've, I've stretched a few times at home, but it doesn't seem to stick. But um, yeah, routines, it's, it's one of those things <laughs> um, I think about, or it's like I'd like to do it, but I haven't yet. Um, so this one. I was very excited about the newest addition to my object family, my filing cabinet. So um, I started using it yesterday and it's been amazing. Um, something about removing the piles and putting them into vertical storage. It's just like I can, I can look at one thing without having to like lift up a bunch of other things and then put them back. So. Um, 
I'm excited to see my papers finally um, not have too many wrinkles or creases and I can store them longer. But then also when people come over, they can peruse my filing cabinet and uh, hopefully find something they like, which uh, people haven't been able to do before. Filing cabinets are cool. And this one, it's uh, a cup, a broken cup with money leaking out. And um, for those of you that don't know me that well, I am currently underemployed. I, I recently quit my chocolate factory job. Um, I thought I was going to increase my hours at my Copy Central job, but it was at a different location and it was very stressful. Um, it's, it's, it's a different environment that I didn't anticipate where it was just like I, I had coworkers and... Um, it was interesting because, yeah, um, yesterday um, I watched this comedy special called The Net by Hannah Gadsby, and she summed it up very interestingly where it's like, if you're in a room full of men and you're a woman, you, you don't feel safe. It's just like an instinctual, like, this is weird. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't get it. And it's just like... It's really awkward because it's like it's hard to communicate the kind of uncomfortability to people, but it's hard to also like inquire about it. Like, is this store full of men? And it's just, uh, it's a weird feeling because uh, it was going to really help me like get better at my job and be this like source of income. But anyways, I quit the job because it was stressful. And so now I'm looking for more job situations. But yeah, anyway, so it's totally leaking money right now. It's just like, um, can't be done. It's like, if I didn't, you know, I didn't have any savings. I don't know. I wasn't like making a ton of money before. So it's just like, anyways, um, I've had a lot of help and I'm really grateful for it. And I'm not homeless right now. So that's really good. And so staying positive about that, which leads me to my next drawing. So this is me aiming at different paychecks. My uh, different paths um, are, are are pretty wild. I think a part of it is that when you're desperate, a lot of, you like start to imagine that you can do a lot of different things. Um, like I emailed the school asking them if maybe I could be like an assistant teacher at their preschool. I I, I didn't hear back. Um, I did audition for a. Um, historical scary attraction at uh, the Fisherman's Wharf in San Francisco. Um, that was cool because I prepared a monologue and everything and um, I'll hear back today or tomorrow if I got it. But yeah, I've been telling people customer service but also if it's art related that would be cool and um, yeah, it's a bit tricky but I'm hopefully going to find a way out of not debt, but, you know, asking people for rent money. Anyways, um, so let's go to this middle part. Whoosh. So this one is me. Um, my laptop kind of died. I think it's because um, I wasn't very careful and left it plugged in too much. And so um, at this point, I wanted to fix it. Um, but um, some of the screws uh, won't come out. So that requires a technician and they charge a lot of money just to remove the, the backing. And so I'm kind of putting that on hold. A lot of it too is that it's not even my laptop. So I've been kind of just wanting to return it to the person who owns it and let them find the most thrifty way to fix it. But he's currently out of town. So anyways, just no laptop. And I haven't had a desktop in over three years, well, two years, um, since I left Seattle, I haven't really set up my, my desktop, and, um, I guess I had it briefly in Redwood City, so it's only been two years since I've had my desktop, but yeah, essentially moving to Oakland, I haven't set up my desktop, and I, I miss it, it's like, you know, place to be, my, my desktop is really, cool and has a lot of great programs anyways so hopefully I'll get my desktop set up this 
coming week. Um, I got my desk, so things are looking up. But anyways, right now it just feels like, like I have a broken leg. Like there's things I can't do that I want to do, and that I kind of like put a lot of my identity in, like um, digital art and video art, and it's just like, mm, uh, yeah. So just kind of um, accepting um, the things that I can't do right now. This is gonna be a long video, but we're over halfway done with the the drawing board here. And this one is um, a horizon and a winding path towards a plumeria setting sun. Um, I know I've talked a lot about this on social media, but I think processing grief is, is tricky when your family is far away and you don't like using the phone, which is me. Um, so anyways, um, I tell anybody about it, honestly. I love talking about my dad, but also just like grief in general. It was the first death I've ever experienced from someone that like I knew, and especially like probably one of the most important people in my life. I mean, probably, I mean, duh, yeah, I mean, my dad's cool. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's a long winding road, but also, um, yeah. Good to tell stories. Um, I like eating food he likes, so it's pretty easy for me to kind of like tap into that, like a legacy of love, I guess. I don't know how to describe grief when you like participate in these things where it's like, no, he'd love it. I mean, it's 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 kind of interesting because with family and and people that die, it's just like. So much of you is them, so it's, it's it's like like harder to avoid than it is to accept. But anyways, um, I don't know if that made sense, but yeah. So I think about that. But yeah, so beautiful tropical memories. Moving right along. So for some of you um, that have been keeping up with my daily life, or weekly life, or monthly life. I have been um, trying to raise money for a camera where I can plug in my nice microphone and um, essentially do better ASMR videos. And um, one of my um, good friends decided to send me their camera, their DSLR in the mail. This is huge. I've never had a nice camera before. And so the idea of like, so many pixels it's like I can document all my work and make prints out of them um, I can do some portrait photography um, I'm interested in that kind of thing where it's just like I would never want to do it mostly because like when you don't have the tools you don't really think about the stuff you can do with tools you don't have and so I'm looking forward to this like kind of opening up a whole world of um, photo art you know? Anyways, I'm very intrigued about the possibilities that I, it's just, like, but also documenting, but also possibly, like, job opportunities. Like, I would love to photograph somebody's wedding. Um, that sounds weird. It sounds desperate. It sounds like I need a job. But it's something to think about. But yeah, I also like that it's on this, like, little parachute setup. Um, being in this kind of, like, throw of, like, any money is like the sweetest blessing ever but also gifts like this where it's like it, it, it's just like it, it feels like I'm in the Hunger Games and and, and um, when these parachutes come from the sky it's like it's like that scene where it's like the the medicine that um, Peter gets from the parachute like pretty much instantaneously heals his wound and that's pretty amazing but it's just like these tools like heal wounds it's an incredible thing where it's just like you have a thing that allows you to create art and and that like distracts you from like sad stuff and stress stuff and so um it's interesting because it is like Hunger games too where it's like like people that have more money than you like it doesn't hurt them that much or at all even i mean it makes them feel good to like 
support their tributes or whatever and help them through the hunger camps. That's a bit dramatic. Um, I don't think it's exactly like that. It's not like a gauntlet with virtual um, dog monsters, but it definitely feels like that sometimes. But anyway, so what a great blessing. It's coming in the mail this week and I can't wait to show everybody. Um, I like the idea of it just like being part of like the package of me when I go to parties is like I can take your photograph. Um, I don't know. I don't know what people with cameras do. Anyways, just keep on moving on. So this drawing, this is what I call my art house. Lately I've been thinking about going back to school and so I would go back to school for performance art and it's kind of like you know, why would you do that? What would you have to gain? And I think a part of it is just like, I love the idea of school and kind of like escaping the toil of finding a job that I don't like. But um, yeah, I'm holding off on it. And a lot of it is that, you know, there's so much I can do for myself without an institution. So um, Anyways, I've been reading books on um, painting and stuff and looking for opportunities. But yeah, this house has um, been a solid piece of my drawing boards. Um, just thinking about it and it's just like being grateful for it, but also like feeling it be this like safe, solid thing is really nice. I feel protected by this idea that I'm working towards this goal of learning about performance art and artists and art in general what does art mean and and how does art help people and also kind of like non-art too like it's interesting thinking about like you know how how therapy is like art but is um also just an experience but also art as an experience anyways still working it out Alright, so the last thing, I won't get into it too much. Um, I find it interesting that, like, um, I draw my mother and father, um, sorry, my mother and sister, um, like this, but I kind of owe them money, and it's super awkward that they're not, like, defined in different ways in my head, but, um, it's just tough owing people money, especially people that you love and they love you because then it's just like essentially loading a gun and being like you know, I might talk to you and say something nice, but then also it just might be like, we're gonna talk about money and it's gonna make me feel like just a bad person for not having it, and it's a very um, it stresses the relationship, sometimes to the point of, um, not non-existence but like um It'll be better in the future when I get figured out. Um, but it's not that great right now. Although my my drawing of my mom has changed a lot, which I really appreciate. So she used to be like this big black squiggly on top of this barrel of debt between me and her. Now she's kind of like to the side of it. I know she's busy, but like I feel like we're working it out where it's like our goal is to work with it together and not have it stress me out too much anyways um not to end on a sad note but that's my whole drawing and so um I think it helps me just kind of like know that this is just like a temporary thing and it's and it's like there's there's good stuff happening and good stuff to come, good stuff I'm looking forward to. And um, it's pretty free. Like, for those of you who don't pay $20 a week to see a therapist, like, you can just get a piece of paper and draw some stuff out and kind of think about, like, what it means and stuff, like, um, and how things change. Like, this little drawing, this is... This is me at the bottom of a big barrel of debt. And it's just like, when you owe somebody so much money, it's like kind of hard to conceive of. But when you draw it out, it's just kind of like, this is just one thing. And there's like, there's other things. And 
it's like I can see it I can kind of understand that there are boundaries around it that it's not infinite or impossible like if you can put it on a piece of paper it's kind of like you can control it and so anyways um, thanks for um, doing this exercise with me and hopefully you'll find this uh, like valuable for you and your self-care practices if you want to sit and make a little drawing board you can find out that there's there's some stuff that you're holding inside that you can let out and just kind of like the way I see it is like I'm letting the paper hold it and then I don't have to hold it anyways um, I hope you have a great fourth of July uh, for a lot of people that means spending time with their family and eating delicious food and appreciating um, I guess fireworks I'm still like on the fence about it because I think they're beautiful but um, not exactly I mean not even environmentally friendly but um, the marvel of fireworks is really cool and uh, the other day I went to the Exploratorium with Dimitri and we saw this cool lecture about uh, how different compounds make different colors and so if you see some green fireworks it's it's probably some lithium getting blown up. That's cool to think about. Anyways, ta-ta for now. Have a good day. Take care. Boop, 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 boop.